What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. So, when you travel full time in your RV, whether that's a motorhome, a fifth wheel, travel trailer, whatever it is, if you travel full time, um, it always there's always a, that awkward time when it comes time to do maintenance on your stuff. You know, you gotta figure out where to do it uh, or to pay somebody to do it. You know, we're big advocates of people doing as much as they can themselves versus paying to have something done. So, fortunately for us, uh, we're at my brother's house right now, so I've got a spot that I can get the oil change done on the truck. But uh, just wanted to kind of go over the advantages of learning how to do some of these things yourself. So today, we are going to change oil on our 2018 Ram 2500 diesel. Dylan's going to give me a hand on that and uh, you know I'm going to show you guys that this is something you can do. I could actually do this in a parking lot and not even spill any oil. Um, you know if you get set up with just a few just a few things uh, to contain your oil and, and to catch the oil in uh, you can do this job real real simple. You can do it in, a, in the parking lot of an auto parts store. Um, you know if you do it there nobody's going to think twice. You know, especially if you're not making a giant mess everywhere. I'll show you what we do to avoid making a mess when we change the oil in our truck. I don't know if it'll apply to every truck, but I know a lot of a lot of people tow with uh, with the Ram with the Cummins diesel in it, and the oil change is going to be pretty much the same on all of these uh, newer model trucks that that Ram makes. So, show you guys how we handle it, and uh, show you just how simple this process is. This is the easiest oil change will ever do. Don't let it intimidate you. Yep. So all you basically need to do this job, it takes 12 quarts of oil. So we got three gallons of the Valvoline Premium Blue. This oil is endorsed by Cummins. This is what we've used from the beginning. Um, I've always done my own oil changes on this truck ever since we first got it brand new. So I buy our oil online at Rural King. Um, they have this stuff for $12 a gallon, which is crazy. If you go to any auto parts store, it's going to be at or over 20 bucks a gallon. Um, for whatever reason, Royal King has the best prices around on the Valvoline Premium Blue. I've ordered it from there every time I've done the oil changes on the truck, and it's always been right around, right around 12 bucks a gallon. So fantastic deal uh, for that oil. So you can either have this oil shipped to you, or you can order it online, pay for it, and then uh, if there's a Royal King store near your location then you can go right in the store and pick it up. So we did the in-store pickup for this, worked out great. Um, I order, I get our oil filters off of Amazon um, and I'll either get the Fleet Guard, this is the Fleet Guard LF16035, I'll either get this filter or the Mopar filter. So Amazon's kind of funny, sometimes these Fleet Guard filters will be out of stock and I'll have to get the Mopar uh, equivalent, but either way I'll either do the Fleet Guard or I'll do uh, the Mopar filter and also get the fuel filters from Amazon as well and same deal I'll either get uh, the Fleet Guard brand or the Mopar brand whichever one is in stock uh, at Amazon they're about the same price so I don't really have a huge preference as long as it's one or the other so in this box uh, I keep this up in front of the fifth wheel this has all of my oil supplies um, this is our generator oil uh, I got my funnels in here just to kind of keep all that stuff that could possibly drip a little bit of oil or be a little messy. Kind of keeps it all contained. I got an oil filter wrench. Uh, but what I've really got in here, this thing is pure gold. And this one particular thing will make your oil change 100% mess free. That's this little bad boy. So I've got, I got this from Lyle. Lyle Tools on Amazon, and uh, I'll leave a link for it in the description. But this basically threads in to your oil filter so that when you're on the truck, you take your oil filter off, you reach in there, you screw this in, 
and then you can actually tilt your filter up and pull it out. Keeps all, keeps your oil in, seals it up, gives you a little handle there to grab it with. So the biggest complaint we hear about people with these trucks is that they take it somewhere to get the oil change done. They spend 150, they spend 150, 160 dollars to get an oil change done, and they have oil leaking everywhere for days and days afterwards because oil's all over the skid plate and underneath all the steering components. Um, if you use this little tool right here, you're going to have zero mess. This thing is worth its weight in gold. It is fantastic, and I'll show you exactly how great it is once we start doing this oil change. That's pretty much the basics um, as far as the tools that you need. Standard oil filter wrench, um, you know, to get in there and get the filter off. This Craftsman five gallon bucket is what I use to catch the oil in. Um, as you can see, it's a rectangle shape, so it's not the typical shape of a five gallon bucket. It's got a nice lift that clamps on, and uh, I'll drain all our oil in there, and then that kind of keeps everything contained until I can get up to the parts house and pour this in the uh, recycle oil container, wipe it down, and you know, we've got it fits nicely again up in the front compartment of the fifth wheel. So I can kind of keep all this stuff up there. Uh, and even though, you know, on the inside of it, it's oily and messy, it really keeps, keeps it pretty, pretty clean up there in that front compartment without having oil everywhere. Um, so I think that's everything you're gonna need. Uh, gonna get to it. You guys, just how easy this is. You're gonna you're gonna be amazed once you see how simple this is. All right, Dylan, you ready? Mm -hmm. not, not everybody has a fantastic helper like Dylan, but lucky for me, he's cheap. <laughs> just to be safe, just in case, I've got some cardboard. I'm gonna slide under here. And it fits. Clears the axle, you can get right where you need. All right, so all you need is a 3 8 ratchet. Get that plug loosened up. This is probably the messiest part of the whole thing is popping this plug out. Now, don't drop it. Don't drop it, ready? Go. So there you go, plug is out. We can wipe it off. Once all that oil is drained, just pop your plug back in. Okay. All right. Oil is drained. No mess so far. So we're going to slide your catch bucket over here kind of underneath the kind of underneath your the right front area underneath where the filter is kind of located. Here's your filter right there. That's what you're looking for. You just come right through the right front tire and uh, you can get your oil filter wrench on there and loosen that right on up. All right, Dylan. Oil filter wrench, sir. That's it. And then I'm going to need that little red plug. Stick this in there. And as long as you don't over tighten the snot out of this thing when you put it on the first time, it'll spin off pretty easy uh, when you gotta put this when you gotta take it off the next time. So now just reach in there. Can't really get two hands in there, so you got to be really careful. Spin that off. And you're going to set that filter, just set it straight down. So now, you're going to take your little red plug and you're going to screw this into the top of your filter because you can't get that filter out. You have to turn the filter up sideways and pull it out through that hole. If you don't have this tool, you're going to spill all that oil all over everything, which is typically what happens when you take your truck in and they do an oil change on it somewhere. Uh, they don't have this tool to get this filter out. 
So, oh, don't drop it down. Uh, just gonna spin that little bad boy right in there. Make sure it's kind of snug in there. You gotta just lift it up. Bring it on out. And there you go. So now once we get our old filter out, we gotta fill the new filter up with oil. And we're gonna take our plug out of here and put it in there. And then I usually put this filter in like a gallon baggie um, until I can get it, take it down with the oil to dispose, to dispose of it at the, uh, at the parts house. So, first things first, we're gonna fill this filter up. So I've seen conflicting information whether you have to fill your filter up or not first. I mean, I've always done it on any of the large oil filters, you know, small car oil filters I never really did it on, but on the uh, on the bigger filters that hold quite a bit of oil, I've always filled them up first. You're careful not to knock anything over you shouldn't have a giant mess but you know anything can happen especially when you're dealing with this much oil so that's why we try to put down cardboard I mean even if I'm pretty confident that I'm not gonna spill any I still put cardboard down you're um, like... yeah I still put cardboard down just because you know, cardboard is a lot easier to clean up than oil on the ground. And if you're doing this, especially if you're doing it in like a parking lot at a parts store or something like that, you know, you don't want to you don't want to spill oil over their over their parking lot. So, you know, if you have a little cardboard to put down, go ahead and do that. All right, so we have our new filter ready to roll, filled up with oil. Got our new plug in there, so that's going to keep anything from coming out while we put it back in the truck. So I'm just going to reach up here. Where the filter goes and just kind of wipe off any of that old oil that's up there as best I can. You know, you can't see anything, so all you can do is kind of do the best you can with it. And now we're going to put this filter back in, stand it up, take the plug out, and then we're going to spin it on, tighten it up. So, you know, a lot of this you're doing blind. It's like I said, you can't see where it goes on, so just have some patience. Um, don't be in a rush. I mean, it's a perfect little fit. You can set it right down, and you'll see. It has a nice little spot where it'll stand up right in there. All right, it's off. So now, I'm gonna be careful because if you dump it over now, you're gonna spill oil out. So be careful when you reach in here. Lift it straight up. the wrench down. So we're just gonna snug it up. There we go. Filter's on. So all that's left now is to fill the truck up with oil, start it up, reset the oil filter uh, or the reset the oil change counter. We're all set. So that's pretty much it. I mean, as you can see, you know, it's uh, as far as oil changes go, it's pretty easy to do. I mean, the first time you do it, you know, it's a little tricky trying to feel around where that filter needs to go back up in place. So, you know, don't get discouraged if you do it the first time and it's a little difficult to find where the filter goes in. Um, you know, to make it a little easier if you want, you can actually turn the tire to the right and that'll give you a little more space to get two hands in there if you need to to get the filter up in where you need to get it. But uh, you know, I'm going to add the rest of this oil and uh, we'll crank it up, check it, make sure we're full. So I'm going to do the whole oil change on this truck 
for just over fifty dollars. I mean, that's that's a fantastic savings to me versus paying somebody, you know, anywhere from one hundred and fifty to one hundred and eighty dollars to do an oil change on this truck, and then get my truck back and find out I've got oil all over everything because they spilled oil everywhere because they didn't have the plug tool uh, to plug the filter. So I'm going to go ahead and get this filled up and we'll check the oil. All right, 12 quarts in. So this is 12 quarts. That includes what we put in the filter. So it's 12 quarts total is all you'll need to do this. And when I'm done with my funnels, I'll wipe the end of it off and then I'll stuff my paper towel down in there to kind of catch any, any of the drips that might want to come out. It just helps keep things a little cleaner. Look under there where the filter is, make sure there's no nothing leaking. Uh, just make sure everything's sealed up good. Perfect, right about halfway up the stick. Halfway up past the uh, safe mark, so as soon as it sits for a second, that'll drain back down even more, it'll be perfectly full. Um, so, you know, that's all there is to it. Um, definitely, if you're handy at all, you can definitely tackle this. Um, like I said, I don't know if this, you know, I don't know if, if every truck out there is gonna be this easy to do, but as far as diesels go, I know diesels intimidate a lot of people. Um, intimidated me when we first got it about whether it's something I could handle and do on the road or not and uh, I really think after doing it a few times we've kind of got a little system set up to where I can handle this you know no matter where we're at um, obviously you know changing oil can be a can be a pain but um, you know if you have the right tools and the right bucket to catch your oil in and everything you know make a plan you know your oil change is coming due so just make a plan Know where you're going to go to dispose of your old oil. Um, you know, know where you can go to where you can actually change it without anybody saying anything or getting in trouble. Uh, so, you know, a parts a parts store parking lot is probably probably the best bet, uh, and then you can take your oil straight inside and dispose of it. So, you know, the other thing with with doing your own maintenance, it really gives you the chance to be underneath your truck. You can kind of look around at things. You can see if you've got any other leaks starting to crop up. Um, you know, you can catch things well in advance. That'll save you a bunch of time and money versus waiting until it's broke down before you catch it and realize there's a problem. So uh, it just gives you a chance to kind of get under the hood, get underneath the truck, and get out in front of any issues that you might have uh, coming up, you know, because, man, there's, a, there's enough things that are going to stress you out traveling full time. Um, you know, your tow vehicle and your maintenance shouldn't be, shouldn't be one of those things. So just stay on top of it and uh, you'll be much better off in the long run. So that's it guys. I mean, you can see it's not difficult. Save yourself some time, save yourself some money. Um, you know, trying to get into a dealership, trying to get in somewhere, make an appointment, have to take your vehicle in, wait. Hopefully they do the job right, 50-50, whether they do or not. Um, you know, just like I said before, we're big advocates of people trying to do as much as they can themselves on their vehicles, on their RV. Um, you know, don't be scared to tackle it. My big job I'm doing next, gonna repack our bearings. That's something that's got to be done yearly. Um, you know, if I tried to get into a dealership and have that done or pay a mobile guy to come out and do it, 
man, I'm looking at all kind of hassle and a lot of money. It doesn't require a whole lot to repack the wheel bearings yourself. Um, you know, it's just some time and effort, a little bit of money, but a whole lot less money than uh, what you're going to spend if you pay somebody else to do it. And everything that you do on your rig that you do yourself, that's one more area that you're able to handle and take care of. Um, you know, when you're out there on the road, if something were to happen, you're not going to be completely clueless as to how everything operates, how it's all put together. You know, you're going to be able to get in there and maybe it's it maybe something catastrophic that you can't fix but at the very least you will be able to at least kind of diagnose it or kind of cobble something together to get you by to your next stop um, until you can get a professional out there to look at it if it's something major doing your own maintenance is a great great place to start to get an idea of how everything's put together how everything operates on your trailer on your truck um, and it'll save you so much so much headaches and so much hassle if you just have that basic knowledge um, you know when you go in to to begin your full-time full-time travel so definitely not knocking anybody that doesn't know how to do it because I don't know how to do all this stuff but I know how to look it up you know I find blog posts about it where people have written about it with pictures that they can show you I find YouTube videos that show people doing it um, you know and that's, that's pretty much how we've learned to do a lot of this, this stuff. We replaced our own um, water heater control board, uh, fixed our refrigerator when it wouldn't kick over to electric, it just wanted to stay on the gas mode. Uh, and I did all that just from forums and from YouTube videos. You'd definitely be well, well ahead of the game uh, if, you, if you start doing some research on the way things work and the way they operate and how to maintain them before you start down the road. I will be doing a video when I pack these bearings. Um, I'm sure that'll be a riveting video of wheel bearing packing, but uh, you know, at least it'll be a resource out there. If somebody's thinking about trying to tackle their own wheel bearings, I'm sure how to go about it. It's not hard either. It's a little time consuming, um, but it's not difficult and anybody can do it. Just like the old change on the truck, literally anybody can do it. So that's it for now. We appreciate you guys watching. And we'll catch you guys down the road.